Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. It's always great to have you here and today we're diving into something that's been making me very excited lately, especially if you enjoy working with AI generated videos. Today's topic is a fascinating new model called One Video Phantom. This tool opens up a fresh way to create videos by combining images of characters, backgrounds or objects and doing it all in a way that feels smooth and natural. No weird cuts, no awkward jumps. Just a clean, continuous video experience. Now, before we jump straight into the technical side, I want to ask you a small favour. If you enjoy this kind of content AI tools, tutorials, and deep dives, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. Your support really helps our community grow and motivates me to keep bringing you the latest updates in the world of AI image and video creation. All right, with that said, let's get into it. What is One Video Phantom? One Video Phantom is a video generation model that lets you upload up to four different images and then it crafts a full video using all of them together. Whether it's characters, scenes or objects, you can feed multiple visual elements into the process and the model works to connect them into a coherent visual story. At the heart of this new workflow is a key feature, the One Video Phantom Embeds node. This special node allows you to inject up to four different types of latents, phantom latents, directly into the video generation process. You can customize how many frames each image will influence, adjust the CFG scale, how closely it follows your prompt, and even control the percentage of the video where each image has the most impact. How the workflow works, this new workflow created by Kijai builds on a basic one video structure, but introduces an important twist. Instead of just starting from random noise, you can input images directly to guide the generation. Here's a simple breakdown. Upload your images. You can choose up to four images you want to include in the video. Resize and prepare. The workflow will automatically resize your images and add padding, usually a white or black background, to make them easier to work with. Encode images to latents. After padding, the images are encoded into latents compressed forms that the AI can work with more efficiently. Phantom embedding. These latents are then passed to the One Video Phantom Embeds node, where you define their influence over the video timeline, like setting how much an image affects the beginning versus the end of the clip. Sampler magic. The latents move into the One Video Sampler, where the actual frames of the video are generated. Here, you can fine tune settings like the number of steps, CFG, classifier free guidance, random seed, scheduler type, and more. Decode and output. Finally, the generated latent video is decoded back into a viewable video file ready for you to preview and share. Don't forget your prompt. One very important thing I want to point out, you still need to write a prompt to guide the video creation. Even though you are injecting images, the text prompt acts as a kind of narrator for the AI, telling it how to blend everything together. If your prompt doesn't match the images, you might see conflicts, weird artifacts, unexpected objects, or scenes that don't make much sense. In my example, I used the positive prompt. An executive woman is walking in a business office. For the negative prompt where you tell the model what you don't want, I used a detailed description focused on avoiding common issues like blurry details, ugly artifacts, and awkward poses. Bright color tone, overexposed, static, unclear details, subtitles, style, work, painting, frame, still, overall grayish, worst quality, low quality, JPEG compression artifacts, ugly, defective, extra fingers, poorly drawn hands, 
poorly drawn face, deformed, disfigured, limbs with abnormal shapes, fused fingers, motionless frame, messy background, three legs, crowded background with many people walking backward. By setting these prompts carefully, you massively increase the chances of getting a clean and consistent video output. Resolution matters. In today's demo, I purposely chose a smaller resolution to speed things up. I generated the video at around 832x480, which works well for quick testing. However, if you want better quality, sharper faces, cleaner backgrounds, you can absolutely increase the resolution. Just keep in mind, this model is about 3 billion parameters and bumping up the resolution puts a lot more pressure on your GPU. If your GPU isn't powerful enough, you might experience slowdowns or even crashes. If you have a strong setup, definitely experiment with higher resolutions. But if you're like me, sometimes you have to balance speed and quality depending on your hardware. My test results and observations. All right, time for some real world impressions. I ran a few test videos using one video phantom and overall, I'm genuinely impressed. The model is very creative. It adds contextual elements naturally, like showing two women walking through a business office, even though I only fed one main character. But, and here's the honest part, the face quality wasn't perfect. At lower resolutions, the faces tend to lose detail and sometimes the expressions look a bit off. Still, even with these imperfections, the overall scene layout was very good. And if the face isn't exactly what you want, no worries. You can always face swap it afterward using tools like Insight Face or Face Fusion to clean things up. I also noticed that using background removal before inserting characters into scenes could really help. It reduces the chance of weird blending between your main subject and the AI generated background. So if you're aiming for clean, professional looking results, background cleanup might be worth the extra step. Another thing I'm planning to test soon is introducing multiple characters into the same background, intentionally using different images for each one. Imagine creating a small office scene with several people interacting, each one placed based on the source images you provided. It's a huge opportunity if you're trying to create short AI films, narrative scenes, marketing clips, or even animated sequences for social media. Being able to inject multiple characters gives you much finer control over the story you're trying to tell rather than relying purely on random AI generation. One word of advice though, when using multiple characters, you'll want to keep a close eye on their sizes and proportions. Since the images are resized and padded automatically, if your original characters have very different resolutions or aspect ratios, they might look out of place next to each other. A quick tip, prepare your character images in advance, trying to keep them roughly the same size and composition before uploading them to the workflow. This helps everything look a lot more natural in the final video. Creative possibilities. When I first tested One Video Phantom, I immediately started thinking about all the creative applications beyond simple walking animations. For example, you could create transition scenes where one environment morphs smoothly into another, like moving from a cityscape to a countryside using different background images. Or imagine an object focused video where a product slowly rotates or transitions between design variations, perfect for advertising or product showcases. Artists and storytellers could even build hybrid scenes, blending fantasy elements with real world photography to create something completely unique. The possibilities really open up once you start thinking of images as building blocks instead of just static references challenges you might encounter. Of course, no workflow is perfect. There are a few challenges 
and limitations you should keep in mind when working with one video phantom. First, timing. While you can control how much influence each image has during the video, sometimes transitions between images can feel a little abrupt if the CFG or frame blending isn't finely tuned. It takes some practice to balance the start and end percentages to create that really smooth, natural flow we all love. Second, background complexity. The model tends to perform better with cleaner backgrounds or more open scenes. Busy, detailed backgrounds might sometimes confuse the model, leading to artifacts or messy compositions. If your goal is maximum clarity, starting with simple backgrounds or isolating your subject before adding a background later can really help. Third, generation time. Because you're working with multiple latents and relatively complex prompts, video generation isn't instant. Depending on your resolution and hardware, a short clip could still take several minutes or longer to process. So be patient. Sometimes the best results come after a bit of fine tuning and waiting. Tips for better results. After playing around with it for a while, here are a few extra tips I can share to help you get better results. Use consistent lighting across your input images. Try to avoid mixing night shots with sunny ones unless you want a dramatic transition. Be mindful of the prompt details. A clear, descriptive prompt that matches your input images will almost always produce better coherence. Experiment with seed locking. Locking the seed number helps you replicate your results if you want to tweak small details without regenerating everything from scratch. Test different frame counts. Higher frame counts make the video longer and transitions smoother, but they also increase rendering time. Find a balance based on your project's needs. Final thoughts overall, I'm really excited about what One Video Phantom brings to the table. It's not just another way to generate videos, it's a new tool for building stories visually in a way that's a lot more intuitive than before. You're not just relying on randomness, you're actively directing your AI output by choosing the characters, backgrounds, and compositions that matter to you. If you found this walkthrough helpful, it would mean a lot if you could hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and maybe even share this video with a friend who's into AI creativity. Your feedback and support really do make all the difference in growing this space and inspiring new ideas. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, stay creative, stay curious, and keep building amazing things.